What is happening? Nick Che back with another video. Today we are talking cameras, photography, videography. If you're not interested in this tech review stuff, um, come back next time for a new video. But today is a question I've been getting asked a lot is, you know, what kind of camera do I shoot with? Do I prefer different brands over another? And let's just jump right into it. So first things first, obviously this video is entitled Canon vs Sony because those are the two brands that I shoot the most and have worked with the most over the past few years. So when I first got into photography, I shot on the Fujifilm X10, which is a great point and shoot camera, but then eventually I upgraded to Canon. And now as to Canon versus Nikon, this is a huge controversial question. It's been debated years and years, and there's tons of videos that you can look over the exact specifics, but from what I've experienced and from using specifically Canon over the past almost six years, I can say that by far, I'm a diehard Canon fanboy. Like no matter what, nothing will ever beat Canon's colors, face profiles, their build is always great, and overall, like it's just super user friendly. Like if you're just getting into photography, I can't recommend any brand more than Canon, just because the user interface is so easy to use. It's very simple, it's very well laid out. Nikon is so confusing, like I can't figure out how to change the freaking shutter speed without having to go into like different dials and things like that. So that kind of gets the Canon versus Nikon debate out of the way. Obviously, like the biggest photographers are using either or, but from what I've seen and the photographers that I follow, a lot of them usually shoot Canon just because it's so, once again, like the color space is huge, which I'll get into later. Okay, now as far as Canon versus Sony. Canon, I really primarily use for all my photos, any portraits, weddings, events, anything like that. And Sony, I primarily use for videos, so all my vlogs, my travel videos, um, anything else that I'm using to film like cinematic stuff, I'll shoot on Sony. Okay, so my biggest complaint is I don't have an all-in-one body, meaning that I literally have to carry around a Sony and a Canon just to film photos and videos because I don't like shooting photos on this and I don't like shooting videos on my Canon. And so now I have to have like these stupid converters to adapt my Canon lenses to Sony, blah, blah, blah. And so what I'm looking for is an all-in-one photo video camera and I haven't found that yet, which I'm hoping to find eventually. Okay, so let's specifically talk Canon for photos and videos. Photos are out of this world. They're super tech sharp. Um, the image quality is great. The skin looks so soft. Um, the color space profile. So what I mean by that is like, if you notice a lot of like Canon pictures and portraits, it's that it just looks so natural. Like they figured out their color science and they just made it work. That's why Canon has been the top of the brand for every camera for so long, literally. Like the Sony colors suck. Like I hate shooting portraits on this because like the skin looks yellow and like it doesn't look great. Like the quality is obviously very sharp and like it looks great. And maybe this is because I'm shooting on the Sony A7S Mark One, but if I had like a Sony A7R2 or R3, like obviously I'd be saying different things. Another thing is the autofocus and like the tracking. Like I'm d using video right now and like it's tracking my face super well. And then with photos, it autofocuses super well. Sometimes I miss it, which is kind of annoying, but if you find the right settings for your autofocus, like it, it turns out fine. All right, so those are some of the pros. Some of the cons is that the size, like these DSLRs are massive. Like it's taking up so much space in my bag and it's such a burden to carry around, like literally just to take photos when you can like have like a compact Sony camera, right? So a few things, like why I'm not shooting solely on like an A7R2 or R3 to have like the photo video, it's because I don't know, there's something about having like a robust camera body when you're shooting portraits. It just makes you feel a lot better. I don't know, it's more traditional for me. Like you don't wanna show up to the function like with this, knowing that it's just as good quality. Like, I don't know, there's also like, you kind of lose credibility. Like people are like, how are you gonna capture like good photos with like this small of a camera when you know, the professionals are using like the freaking like 1DX Mark IIs with a huge battery grip. I mean, so there's that like clout factor. Does that even make sense? All the lenses made for Canon, like the L-series lens and the Sigma R-series, like I love those lenses to death. They're super great quality and they're, a lot of them are weather sealed, meaning that you can kind of get them wet and um, they'll be fine. Like the Canon bodies are also weather sealed, like the 6D Mark II and the Canon 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II, like all those are weather sealed, meaning you can shoot in the rain, which is a super great thing to have. Like I hate taking the Sony out in the rain because I don't know if it's gonna mess up. So yeah, that kind of wraps up Canon. Moving on to Sony. So a few years ago when Sony first launched these A-series cameras, um, they were blowing every other company out of the water in terms of video. Video has been insane. The fact that they've been able to do so much in like such a short amount of time is very impressive and like kudos to Sony for figuring it out. Like their 60 frames per second is buttery smooth. Their S-Log, which means like a flat profile, meaning that you can color grade it later, it looks super great. And they just have a lot more options with video. Like Canon video has kind of sucked. It, like to be honest, it kind of sucks, except in the newer versions. Um, like a lot of people were mad that the 16 Mark II doesn't come with 4K. And yeah, that's kind of annoying. But I don't know, I think it's, it's mainly meant for photos anyway, you know what I mean? Oh, side note, have you guys noticed that a lot of YouTubers are hopping on the 6D Mark II bandwagon? I'm not saying I told you so, but huge YouTubers are, are switching over. Um, like Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, Travel Fields, Jessica Kobesi. 
I mean, not that like I had the 6D Mark II first, but I don't know. So video, Sony just has way more options. You can do a lot more. This is only the Mark One, so technically I have to do external 4K, meaning I have to buy like a separate monitor, but the A7S II does internal 4K, which is super handy. All right, so the cons of Sony is, first off, it's super expensive. Their lenses are like double the price of a lot of Canon lenses. I mean, obviously they're good quality and they're, you know, super sharp and, and precise, but I mean, it's just so much money to be forking out for a lens when you can be, buying Canon gear or whatever. Another annoying thing is that if you do already have Canon lenses, you're gonna have to buy the adapter, meaning that the autofocus isn't gonna be as great. Like you're gonna be losing a lot of um, functions because it's not the native lens. So even with this adapter, a lot of the autofocus capabilities just like don't work. And if it does work, it's either super slow or super lagging. Meaning that like if you're using an adapter with a Canon lens, I only use it mainly for videos. If I wanna do like manual focus, I'm not be gonna be using autofocus anyway, then it doesn't really matter. But if you are trying to shoot like sports or something that does need autofocus, like you can't use an adapter. You have to use a Sony native lens just because like you're not gonna be able to capture the shot. Okay, so after that long spiel, I'm actually considering selling my Sony a7S with this lens and three batteries and the adapter and the charger. If you have serious inquiries, like please email me and I'd be happy to talk over pricing, but I'm trying to get this off my hands because one reason and one reason only. I love the video, I love everything about it. It's just that the stupid screen. Sony, why can't you make a flip out screen? Like that would make life so much easier for so many YouTubers, so many vloggers. Like the fact that I can't see myself when I'm vlogging, literally I miss so many shots, it's so out of focus. And like I can't work with it anymore which is why I'm trying to switch over to something like the Panasonic GH4, GH5, or something that has a flip-out screen so I can freaking vlog. If Sony made a vlogging camera that had a flip-out screen, that would literally answer all my prayers. But as of right now, I need to switch over. I need to try something new. But I mean, obviously, if you're not vlogging, then Sony's a great camera. I mean, people are using it for super high quality production values. Like literally putting on a stabilizer or on a shoulder rig, like instantly takes it to another level with some color grading. And if you're shooting in 24 frames per second, it looks super cinematic and you'll be fine. As far as like user friendliness, I definitely think that the Canon is way easier to use. Like the first few weeks I had the Sony, I literally had no idea how to work any of the settings just because like they're super hard to figure out. They go very in depth and a lot of detail that I had no idea what they were talking about. Um, eventually I figured out how to make it work, but there's still a lot of things that I feel like I haven't jumped into or figured out. But like to be honest, like I don't necessarily need all those functions right now. So obviously there are tons of other brands out there. Canon and Sony are kind of just the two most popular ones in the market right now. As far as, you know, what is the best brand for you, it really depends on the type of photos or videos or just production style that you're gonna be doing. You know, each brand is very good at various things. So you gotta find the right combination of quality, price, um, ergonomics, and like what you're gonna be using it for. Because if you're looking to do video, then obviously kind of go the Sony route. If you're looking to do photos, kind of go the Canon route. If you're trying to find like a happy medium like I am right now, like, I mean, yeah, obviously it sucks like carrying around like two bodies that each cost like two thousand dollars but i don't know like i haven't figured out the answer yet if someone does know like what the best photo video camera is like for me personally like i'd love to have like the canon 1dx mark ii to have like that 120 frames per second and like super great photos but first off that's like a seven grand camera and it's huge like that's massive i can't be taking that around everywhere so if i have to wrap it all up and make a perfect camera it would first off be canon's picture profile and like their photo capabilities with sony's video capabilities with like a panasonic body on like a fujifilm format camera yeah that would be a badass camera if anyone knows anything like that please leave it down below that kind of wraps up all i have to say about canon versus sony if you have any more questions feel free to leave them down below i'll try and get to as many as i can um, specifically talking about camera gear as far as photography and videography, the specifics of that, that's an entirely new concept that I can make videos about later. But yeah, that's it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.